with another high quality, interesting, professional. I'm Danny Rubin, the founder of our company, which is Rubin. And for those of you who so are welcome new, everybody we're a provider to our next online webinar session, our Q and A, business communication skills, email etiquette, phone etiquette, conversation skills. We cover a wide range of topics to help students write and speak at their best as they pursue opportunities. Welcome everybody still coming in. Feel free to say hello and tell us where you're coming from, what school you attend or where you teach and make sure you set it to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see what you're saying. We will get to our guest Steve Schiff in just a few moments. Beforehand, I wanna ask if you always have new people, raise your hand or tell me in the chat, who here is new? Teachers and students, who is a first timer to our webinar series? Let us know who's new here. All right, lots of people who are new and some return, I see some folks who are returning. So what we're gonna do, we always set up with a little bit of information and some free resources. So teachers who are new, we're gonna pass along some free resources in just a second, so look out for that. But a lot of new people, so thank you so much for being here. This is great. Love bringing new folks sort of into our world, letting you know what we do and connecting you and your students with authentic experiences. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. Let me pull up my chat, okay. And the first thing I want you to let you know, when we put this together for the last session, so those who didn't get it the last time or those who were new, we've put together a guide for virtual internship communication skills, where we have examples of how to request a Q&A with a professional via email, teaching students how to prepare for a Q&A itself, like for the discussion, or to go on a virtual tour, preparing questions for virtual site tours, learning how to hold conversations with professionals, writing thank you emails after those conversations, and even how to describe virtual experiences on resumes and cover letters. It's a nice little free PDF we put together full of practical examples you can share with students. We are all about giving how-to and step-by-step -step guides. So I'm gonna tell you in just a second, for those who are new, how to receive this free resource. We've also put together for those who are new, I know some of you have been here before, you've received this. For the teachers, okay, these are teacher resources. We put together a, a, an outline, a curriculum for how to write an effective email. Can I have see a show of hands from the teachers? How many of you wish your students would write emails a little more professionally? Less like a text message and more like an email. More like sort of proper sentence structure. Lots of hands flying up. So take a second and read down this list. We put together this nice little Google folder of email etiquette lessons, teaching how to construct a message piece by piece, helping them understand you text your friends one way, you email a teacher and an employer another way. All right, so if you're interested in both of these free resources for virtual internship communication and email etiquette, here's all you have to do. Go to the chat, please. Type the word interested and your email address. That's all you have to do. Interested and your email address. And what we like to do is reach out for a brief conversation to get to know you. It's so hard in these sessions, you can't actually talk to people where you're just listening to me and soon Steve. So please type interested and your email address. We'll set up a five minute phone call in the next few days to pass along these guides, understand the work you do, help you make sense of this material within your class. Whether you're doing an internship program, a CTE pathway, a college course, whatever it is you're working on, we will help you to connect this content to your world. Okay, it's all free. Just, we love to put out good resources, especially during COVID. So thank you for all the people who put their name, okay? and make sure that you set it to be all panelists and attendees. So when you chat, everyone can see it, not just the panelists, all panelists and attendees. All right, I will remind you about this at the end. Thank you very much, Carrie. We appreciate that comment. Um, so let me also, so we have the free resources. Your material, uh, this material is coming your way if you've requested it. Now, as you know, we do webinars every two weeks. We got another great one lined up two weeks from now. Let me show you what it is. You can get it on your calendar. 
all right? Two weeks from today, we're going to explore the world of nonprofit management with the president and CEO of a food bank. Raise your hand if, you, if you're interested in this topic for your students. If you'd like to show them how to get involved in nonprofit management one day, learning how nonprofit organizations work, learning how a food bank is dealing with the pandemic during the holiday season, pretty timely, right? So Ruth Jones Nichols is going to talk to us about what she does every day. They serve over 200,000 people a year, 18 million pounds of food. So they are going to, she's gonna help us understand the world she's in and the unique challenges she's facing. Okay, so we will put out the link to this webinar tomorrow morning. So look out for the link in the email we send out with the recording from today's webinar, okay? So make sure you sign up, secure your spot, and invite your students or make sure your students can participate. And again, please remember, we always put out a recording. So if you can't bring your students to us live, you can always show them the recording afterwards. Okay, so we're gonna keep doing guest speakers throughout the fall. And this is the next one. Now, I also wanna remind you, everybody who's here today live, okay, thank you for being here live. We're gonna send out a certificate of completion which actually that's the wrong one. <laughs> I, I took out the right one and put in the wrong one. You'll get a certificate for digital marketing for being here today. I'll leave it on this screen. I, I was planning too far ahead. You're gonna get a certificate that you can use. Teachers and students can both use it. Put it in your student achievement binder. Teachers can use it for continuing education. Look out for the certificate coming your way tomorrow as well for being here today live, okay? So we'll, we'll leave it at that. I, uh, I, I tripped myself up using next time's certificate. So you come next time, you'll get that one too. All right, so what are we gonna cover today? We're gonna do a little bit of background before we hold that Q&A with Steve. We're gonna talk about some themes we discussed last time too, but it's important to reinforce it for those who have uh, been here before. We're gonna talk about why it's important to research people before we meet them, how to research people the right way. We're gonna hold that Q&A with Steve in just a moment, and then learn how to send a proper thank you email after a conversation because we don't want this to just be a career conversation. With our company, what we do, we teach the how-to. We teach you how to communicate throughout these career conversations. So to help us get there, I'm gonna share my screen one more time. All right, bring up my chat again. There it is. And we're gonna look at, I'll explain where our instruction comes from. We're gonna look at Steve's company's website and then we're gonna bring him in. So for those of you who are new to our world, our curriculum is called Emerge, and it's a library of practical exercises that teach all kinds of communication and employability skills, like how to write emails, how to use the phone appropriately, how to hold video conferences appropriately. Hopefully you can all see the screen. Can everybody see the screen? It says email etiquette beginner. Can somebody say yes to that? Make sure you're actually looking at my screen. Okay. We also cover employability skills. How many of you teach employability skills in your classes? Raise your hand if you teach employability skills. So we teach networking emails, resumes, cover letters, internship and job outreach emails, LinkedIn profile creation, job interview prep. How many of you are marketing or business or entrepreneurship teachers or who incorporate those themes with your CTSOs? Raise your hand. If you're doing that stuff, we teach business idea creation, sales writing, website content writing, public relations skills, fundraising writing. And how many of you wanna teach your students leadership skills? Raise your hand if you wanna teach leadership skills. We teach, but we focus on the writing and the speaking. So we teach writing as a manager, writing appropriately to your clients, writing to your own team for project management, public speaking exercises, writing reports and summaries. De Devin says, this is everything I'm doing right now. Well, that's great. So writing reports and summaries about your work to your boss, to your teacher, and activities for student leaders, students in CTSO, student councils, learning how to communicate when you're in charge. So we're a wide variety of topics. And we're gonna talk about some of those themes today inside of our program uh, as we go through the discussion and at, at the end. So the first thing, let's, let's switch gears now, and let's, I'm gonna stay here in my browser tabs, okay? So the, everybody who had the worksheet, okay? 
we, I had asked you, and if not, you can work on it right now or learn the skill. We talked about researching a company before we meet somebody. How, raise your hand if you visited this website before today. If not, that's okay, but some of you came here before because we asked you to check out the website. Now, let me ask you a question. When we really want to get to know the latest and greatest with a company, what word do you see on the page right here? What should we click on to see the latest, the latest and greatest information and updates from a company? Tell me the word you see on the screen we should click on. Sylvie said about. Now, about is possible, but many times companies don't update their about page for a long time. A lot of people are saying news. That's right. So we want to always go to a page called news or latest news. And we want to look up something interesting the company's been doing. So I hope that you had done a little bit of homework looking around this page to see some examples of some news from the Hearst Company, which is a major, major uh, U.S. probably international publisher of magazines and newspapers and TV stations. So this is where I want you to always remember before you meet people, do some homework, know about what they do. So you walk into that room with some facts and some figures. Now, what I'd like to do is I want to stop sharing my screen. Let's bring Steve back into the conversation. Okay, hopefully he's still there. He didn't run away from me. There he is. And what I want to do is let Steve introduce himself, talk about his career path to navigate to the job that he has, and then explain a little bit of the work that he does. And as he's doing that, I encourage all the students to please go to the Q&A area and start typing in your questions and we'll go through them and pick out some good ones. So when he's done, he's gonna share some of his projects and we're gonna take some questions. So while he's talking, feel free to submit some questions. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Well, thanks, Danny, for having me. Appreciate the intro. Um, I, I love what you're doing, man. This, we, we haven't like really had a chance to, to catch up. Dan, Danny and I met when we were probably 18 years old. In college. And, um, yeah, first few minutes of, of college, moving day. Um, Long so time friend. Yeah, so it's very cool to, uh, to, to see you doing this now. And I appreciate it. And I so very much appreciate all the teachers and educators that are, that are here today, too. Because um, this is stuff that I and Danny and I did not have in high school, um, you know, when we were growing up. This was just not, it, you know, we were not learning about career skills and how to, you know, how to reach out and how to follow up and all these things that... Uh, Trust me, they are they're they're useful. Um, and they're very 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 useful, and it would have been cool to have some of this stuff. So uh, appreciate uh, all the teachers and and Danny for doing what you do. So, um, like Danny said, uh, my name is Steve Schiff. I am a branded content editor at uh, at Hearst Magazines within our branded content studio there. Um, Hearst, as Danny mentioned, and as a lot of you probably research, is one of the uh, largest uh, publishers and media holding companies uh, in the world. Um, we have uh, newspapers, magazines, TV stations worldwide uh, headquartered in our office tower in Midtown Manhattan, um, which is where I would be now if we were not, um, you know, pandemic 2020. So um, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been over there for, about two years now, and, and what I do, so I say branded content. So within Hearst Magazines, we have a branded content studio, which is essentially like an ad studio inside of Hearst Magazines. And what we do is we create uh, branded or sponsored content for advertisers who uh, come to our, our platforms. Obviously, um, you know, we have the reach of our many magazines, uh, many of which you'll know from L to Harper's Bazaar, Oprah, Men's Health, Esquire, Women's Health, Runner's World. Um, we've got Good Housekeeping, which is a hundred plus year old uh, publication and institute that, uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of cookbooks and home decor uh, suggestions through the years. Um, Delish, which a lot of you guys may be familiar with, you know, recipe videos, you know, highly viral on, on social, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so uh, advertisers, brands will come to us looking to advertise on our platforms. And in addition to what we call media, right? Banner ads and things that you see on our web pages, um, they also are often interested in uh, buying branded content. So this is stuff that we create. 
Um, and there's nuances to it. Sometimes it's, 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 you know, sponsored by, sometimes it's uh, presented by, sometimes we are, you know, really uh, doing, you know, sponsored reviews. But what it boils down to is it's content that's paid for by advertisers that appears on our websites, in print, on our social feeds, it can be video, um, it can be, you know, just articles on our sites, it can be social media posts, it can come in the form of a podcast. And, you know, what the job of the folks such as myself and the other branded editors in our studio is, is really to kind of come up with what those ideas are when we're approached by a, a potential advertiser to kind of show them what we can, what we can create and provide for them. Um, we have a whole team of sellers and marketers who then bring those ideas, put them into beautiful uh, presentations and go off and sell them. And then once they sell through, it's then our job again to take those ideas that we've, that we've created, at least in a conceptual phase, and actually create them. And so we contract freelance writers, photographers. We have a, we have a photo and video team in our studio as well. Um, and we just set about bringing all this stuff to life. Steve, uh, why don't you go ahead and share your screen now and show us a couple of projects that you've done and just kind of take us through both uh, and then we'll take some questions from the group. Sure, yeah, so what you should be looking at now is uh, an article on uh, the Oprah magazine, opramag.com, um, that we did for CVS. Uh, and I'm just trying to hide my little chat window here because it's kind of in my way, but all good. Um, and so this is something that we partnered with on CVS. All your questions about the 2020 cold and flu season answered. Um, so as you scroll through here, uh, we had my one of my favorite writers, Alice Oglethorpe, uh, put this article together on behalf of CVS. And it is exactly what it promises, right? It's just, we call this service journalism. Um, we put the question in the headline and then we take you through and we answer it. Why does the flu spread well in cold weather? How bad will the flu season be this year? On down the line. Um, you'll see we've got um, some expert quotes here that we've reached out to to provide our expertise. So we've got a couple MDs here who we, who we quote throughout the piece. Um, you know, we're citing um, peer reviewed studies and, uh, you know, and, and research um, from the CDC and other, and other places. And, um, you know, presenting this to CVS, it was really, you know, their, their message that they were trying to get out for this program was all about, you know, cold and flu, come get your flu shot. And so, you know, we, one of the things that we offered was just some service journalism that was right on the nose. So you see, we kind of get through all these questions and down it goes. And then you'll also see here, right? So part of what they buy is, is an article, but part of what they buy is what we call media, right? So they have their little banners here that live on the page. Um, and obviously everybody's quite familiar with, with, with those ad units. Um, Go to the next so, one. So, over the next one. So, all right, yeah, and so uh, another another example, um, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm I'm a marathon runner, and uh, one of the big things that brought me to to Hearst was uh, the opportunity to work with uh, Runners World. So this was a really fun project that for me to work on that we did with Brooks, um, where they were selling um, their well, they had a whole line of shoes that they were selling, but to promote their uh, the Levitate 4, which is sort of their like lightweight cushioned, um, you know, shoe for kind of a variety of workouts. We put together what we called a personal victory challenge. Uh, Runner's World has their Runner's World coach, who is, she's sort of the liaison to the Runner's World readers, right? So she composes their weekly newsletters and kind of talks to everybody about what she's thinking about and how she's training. Um, and so we enlisted uh, her, her name is Jess Movold to create what she calls a personal victory challenge, right? And what Brooks was really interested in was this running uh, storytelling, right? Goal focused, getting out there and training. So we said, what if we took Jess, we had her create a challenge and put her through her paces and they also wanted it to be uh, custom photographs. So there's different levels of these things. Um, that previous example you saw was just stock imagery. This one we went out and we custom photographed. And what was cool about doing this was usually we have big crews 
and we pull people into a studio and we're all on top of each other. Or if we're out in the field, you know, there's, there's 15 people kind of roving around on set. But we did this back in, I want to say we did it in like in May. So we were, you know, just kind of coming out of like the peak scary COVID times here in New York City, but we were able to go out in the field and I went out with a photographer and it was me, a photographer, an assistant and Jess. And we went out and we set up a challenge where she was gonna run her fastest mile, but she was gonna do it by running a mile on the track is four laps. So we said, we sent her to four different tracks that were spaced out around the city that were covering a total distance of 20 plus miles. And we had her run one lap on each track to add up to a mile and to see if she could uh, run her fastest mile over the course of 20 plus miles. And it was just a wild challenge that she and uh, the team, myself, kind of cooked up together. We presented it to Brooks. They really liked the idea. And we followed her around the city uh, for a few hours one day and you know, went running at all these different tracks, got these beautiful photographs. So you can see we kind of progressed from day to night, um, packaged it up and gave them some kind of cool little animated assets as well here. Um, so, it, you know, it varies, but ultimately we're just trying to showcase our capabilities. We have access to obviously a huge audience that we're able to target through various means. Um, and this is all the kind of stuff that we present to our clients and say, hey, we can create this beautiful package for you um, in a variety of ways and let's kind of work together to, to hash it all out. Um, and these are the final results. Obviously, there's a lot that that is involved in that. Um, my job is pretty unique. You know, I, I am an editor. I, I have I come from a writing and an editing background, but um, I'm highly involved in the you know, what we would call the pre-sale process as well. So kind of creating these ideas, getting the concepts out to our sellers who can then, you know, make these deals happen. But then on the other side of that, that's when I get into sort of the creative execution. So it's an interesting uh, role. It straddles both sides. That's, raise your hand if you think this is pretty cool stuff. Doing <laughs> Oprah Magazine and CBS and Brooks and all kinds of, like, lots of hands are flying up. This is really cool stuff in front of you know magazines and websites that we all visit we have a lot of questions so i want to start off and dive into some questions okay and um and also just keep an eye on the your worksheet i'll put the question in the chat in a minute but be thinking about something that steve is telling you in these answers that that stick with you something that you would hold on to some piece of advice that he shared i have a question here from shay let me know if you want me to pull down my screen here. yeah go ahead and uh you can turn that off and we can come back to the to the other uh, two so a question from shay uh, she says, what is a skill, if you want to go into this kind of type of work, you want to do like creative marketing or this type of world, what's a skill you should be developing now in high school or college that would set you up for a career in this world? It's a great question. Um, I, foremost, I know this is, this is kind of the, this is the company answer for this forum but you know your written communication skills are super important um, for for this type of role a lot of what I'm doing is 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 via email or in the pre-sale phase you know a marketer will come to me and say okay we've been approached by we've been approached by Adidas they want to see you know three ideas that can live on runners world one on men's health one on women's health plus a video and what can we do on social media and I have to be able to articulate all that in an email that they can then put into a deck and you know make it look pretty um so i would say written communication for sure um and another one i i think would be um kind of your your listening skills you know your communication skills in that way um i have to, to kind of synthesize and and boil down what a client is really asking us for a lot of times they come to us with uh, what is called an rfp or request for proposal and it's pages and pages of them saying, here's what we sell, here's how we sell it, here's our audience, here's how we see ourselves, here's how we see our competitors, here's how our competitors see us, et cetera, et cetera. And from that, I have to come up with, you know, three article ideas that I think will move the needle for their, for their audience and for, and for ours. And so um, that kind of, that, so it's, so it's twofold, right? That, that listening, but also that kind of uh, research and, and synthesis to be able to, um, you know, read through some materials like that and synthesize, okay, here's, here are the key points that I need to hit on that, that 
is going to get them excited based on what they're telling me. Excellent. Another good question here from Gabby, and she says, you're in a high stress deadline driven job. What do you do to not get stressed out or burned out? How do you find that balance? And that's good for really any job that is demanding. How do you make it so you don't burn out? Man, if I it, look, that's, that's, that's the process. Okay. That's every day. So, um, I don't have a magic answer for you. I, I have a few suggestions. Um, a lot of things are things that you've probably kind of heard before. I try to bake in little breaks during the day, give myself five minutes to get up, stretch, take a walk, especially being at home. It's really easy to get stuck in, in one, in one spot. I find it's just, you kind of get comfortable and I'm, I only move, you know, five feet from the kitchen table to the snacks. So I try to bake in those times to just get up, go out into the backyard, get some air, do some stretches. Um, I mentioned before I'm a runner, so I always try to get my miles in a few times, you know, several days a week, um, get out after work and just kind of boosa, you know what I mean? Just kind of just, just, just run it off. Um, and then within the work itself, I think it's important to know that, everything can't be the most important thing that you're working on. Like it's okay in your job to know that some of those things on your to-do list or some of those emails that you have to write back to, like just the answer is good enough. It doesn't have to be the, the best earth shattering. No one's ever thought of this before. Right. And sometimes it does, but um, being able to, to kind of, pick those spots and learn. And it's just something that you kind of learn over time. You know, you get more reps, so to speak, but um, being able to identify where you have opportunities to like, just get the job done versus put all my energy into, you know, really making something so perfect. That's a great answer. And by the way, I'm putting some questions in the chat as we go. I just put the question from our worksheet on what's one thing you learned about his job. Uh, why did it stand out to you? So if you want to, you know, work on some answers to these questions as we're going along, I think that's a really, really great answer. And another good question here from Tyler, he said, did you have a mentor or someone who has helped you along the way to help guide you to where you are? Does this, does somebody stand out to you or even a, a couple of people? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've had some great bosses. I've had some great, um, great editors who have really shown me that side of it right like how to be judicious about about what saying what you're saying and even just how to revise your work so that you're cutting out these extraneous words just that and these sorts of things that that you simply or whatever it is really right all these little, i've had some great editors who have really kind of hammered me with with that kind of stuff over time um and recently at, at, at hearst you know we're, we're a big company with some really impressive leadership and i've had a, a few managers in my in my time at hearst already who have kind of helped instill in me some of what i was just talking about you know being able to compartmentalize and to prioritize um so i've had a, a few great managers there and then i i don't know i think back on teachers and coaches and stuff that i had even going back to middle school and high school who just kind of helped shape my work ethic and and kind of show me the path in that regard, I had, I had an eighth grade algebra teacher who still to this day is like one of, like I consider just somebody who was just formative in, in my development because he kind of showed me at that time, you know, I was kind of an adolescent with an attitude and, you know, I, I was I was like the straight A student who, who if I was just bored in class because it was too easy, I would just, I, I would turn to, I don't know, class clownery type of stuff. And I, and I still think back on him just kind of showing me like, look, you can have these, these other outlets for that, but you need to focus and this stuff is going to be important down the line. So I, I think of people like that. Um, That's great. Great. Yeah. Um, another question here from Alina. She says, if you're looking to hire somebody or you're bringing somebody on the team, what's something you look for on their application? Like what would stand out to you on an application or in a cover letter that would say, this is somebody I want to take seriously? For me, the, the types of hiring I do, I, I don't know if I would call it, well, yeah, it's, a, it's a, matter, a form of hiring. I deal with a lot, of, a lot of freelancers. So for me, it's all about showcasing your work. And if you have you know, a, a nice organized personal website, 
where you can show me some examples and I can click through real quick and, and see what I need to see that's relevant to me. Um, I, I think that that says a lot. Um, a resume is nice. I, I think a lot of times you really have to talk to the person before, before you, you know, make a true assessment. So a resume is, is something that I look to see that it's, that it's put together, you know, correctly and that I can see everything I need to see quickly. But for me personally, um, I, I think those like that personal website showcasing your work and, you know, being really zeroed in on you and what you do. Um, for, for me, that's what I look like. Look at Ooh, that, That's a good answer. Did everybody hear that? He said, it's great when you have your own personal website, someplace he can kind of check you out. I'm going to put that. That's the last question on our worksheet. We're going to talk about thank you notes in a moment, but that's some good advice right there. Be able to showcase your own work. So, so it's not just on paper, but you actually have something to show. And so as you answer those questions, let's remember what he's teaching us because we're going to learn in a few minutes how to write an effective thank you message and why we should incorporate things we learned back into that message. So we're, like I said, we're learning as we're going. We're not just listening, we're learning at the same time. Question from Esmeralda. It's a good question. How do you brainstorm or organize ideas in an effective way to then communicate those ideas to your client or potential client? That's a good question. Go ahead. It's a, it's a great question. Um, so the process I kind of do is I, I tend to start with um, a site search. I, I look at what we maybe have already done, right, on the topic or even with this brand before. So I get a baseline of, of what has worked before. Um, and then, you know, I obviously am entrusted to kind of utilize some of my institutional knowledge of just our Hearst brands, our audience, we have mountains of data, um, but that's kind of the next place I will go. I'll head directly to the editors of that specific site. Again, I sit in kind of our ad studio within Hearst magazines. Each brand's, each Hearst magazine's uh, editorial team sits separately and has, does their own work. So I'll reach out to those editors in chief or those um, site directors of, you know, if there's a, if it's fitness related, I'll reach out to the fitness director of men's health and say, Hey, I've been approached by, you know, body armor sports drink. And they want to highlight how Dustin Johnson trains for the PGA tour. Does our audience care about that? If you were, asked to make a workout that was focused on on golf is that something you would be able to do right so my brainstorming process usually takes me directly to some of the site specific editors and then i'll lean over i'm fortunate i have a i have a counterpart who also i handle all things health and fitness um we have about have six or seven of us branded content editors and we are all focused on particular uh subject matter and so I'm fortunate in that I have another, we get so many proposals for health and fitness related content that there's two of us. So I'll literally, I'll lean over to, to, to Dana and I'll say, hey, have you ever done something like this? Or, you know, she's worked a lot with women's health. She's been there since she was an intern. Um, so I'll say, hey, does women's health have a video franchise we can do for this? And it's literally just asking the questions. I mean, I'm expected to have a lot of answers from, by, the, by the clients and by the sales teams, but I, I have to know that I don't know everything. And so I have to lean on my team and kind of pull people in. Um, I have a deputy editor and an art director who are all very much open to, to brainstorming when these bigger budget projects come along. So I pull them in. I mean, when we were in the office, I would just wander over to their desk and say, hey, I just got approached for this thing and, and can we talk about it? Um, so brain, brainstorming is all about like kind of just shedding you know letting your guard down and and being willing to ask the question or or say that you don't know or if you have some big idea you know running it just running it by the right person a lot of times you know i'll talk to the editor-in-chief of men's health and he'll be like yeah great whatever it is yes like you come up with the wildest idea go for it like i i support you but it's sometimes it's just a matter of getting that that support that you know so then when the thing sells it's not suddenly <laughs> the other way around where they're like, what is this thing you sold and why is it going up on? Right, right. On you want people to, to know about it ahead of time. <laughs> um, we have so many questions here. I'm trying to find some ones that really speak to everybody's experience. Uh, 
Wendy, her students had a few questions. I want to pick one out. If somebody wanted to go into this career path and either in high school or college and they're just gaining experience, what would you say like is the, the first step? Is it to go and find a way to shadow somebody, learn under somebody, gain skills on your own? What would be the first step in this direction? Uh, well, I think you hear it a lot and it's and it sounds intimidating, but it's true. Uh, one of my favorite writers, Shay Serrano, he says this all the time. It's if, if you have an interest in, in this specifically on the on the editorial or on the creative side, just start writing. I mean, whatever the topic is, whatever the thing is, even it, you know, if no one's going to see it, you know, publish it on 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 Twitter, you know, start a, an account on Medium or answer questions on Quora or, you know, whatever the forum is where you're able to get your voice out there. Um, I, I, yes, I, I believe that interns should be paid and, and writers, you know, freelancers should, should be paid. I don't think anybody should be paid in exposure um, or, you know, in likes or anything like that. But when you are sort of where you guys are at right now um, in terms of, you know, just being in high school and really starting out, just go do it. If there's a subject that interests you, go do it. And on top of that, I would say, as you kind of progress, you know, find outlets, whether it's, you know, a, a college paper or things like that. I interned at like a local free uh, weekly paper in Charlottesville. Um, and I, I got paid in, in credit. So I, I, I got paid in a manner. But, um, you know, seek out, seek out those types of opportunities as well. Um, and, and, and reach out to people. This is what I was going to say too. reach out to publications, magazines that you read or websites that you, that, that you're on, reach out, pitch people. Uh, that, that is a editors. They, they take pitches. They do read them. Um, part of what you're going to want to do is take some of the stuff that you're learning in, in places like this and make sure that your pitch is buttoned up and tight and, you know, well presented. But pitch somebody your idea. You know, I, I want to I want to write about such and such topic. It's important in my community. I want to research it. I want to talk to people on the street. I want to you know work with a photographer to go you know highlight some event that I think people need to know about. Put together a pitch and send it out and just bang down doors. Like be, be aggressive. I think one thing, one more thing that I'll say is I've had a somewhat circuitous path. Um, but like, go make your own opportunity and make your own luck. You know, if you want to go work for somewhere, like I keep saying, I'm a runner, New York Roadrunners puts on the New York marathon every year. One year I was volunteering at the marathon. They introduced their new, you know, their head of marketing. He gave a little talk. They sent everybody off to go do their orientation. I went over to the guy and I said, Hey, I'm a writer. I'm looking for opportunities to maybe explore getting into the, the, um, the agency side of things, the advertising side of things, like, can, can I come work for you? Basically, I didn't know if he was hiring or whatever. Um, and I ended up, you know, working for that company for a while that did the marketing for, for New York Roadrunners. So make your own luck and, and go see people out and obviously do it professionally um, and take what you're learning here and, and apply it. But this, the connectivity that we Put the connectivity that we have right now is, is use it to your advantage. You know, don't, don't, don't be afraid that you're not going to stand out in this big ocean of people. Just, just go make your own luck. Seek out people, pitch them your ideas, pitch them yourself. You, you don't right. know what's going to happen until you do it. Raise your hand if you're getting some good advice from Steve today. Some good advice on careers and life. Raise your hand if you're learning some things. All right, now let's, let's, let's come kind of head towards home. A lot of good questions. I got to as many as I could. I'm going to share my screen one more time. And we're going to look at, you know, a big part of, of our company, what we do is we teach students how to write and we connect it to real life situations. So let's pretend that we're sending Steve a thank you message after a networking meeting or a Q&A or that, this type of scenario where we're learning from somebody. So we go into the email and we say, thanks again for the meeting. And then notice what we do right in, right out of the, the beginning of the message. Thank you for meeting with me earlier today or yesterday. We send the message quickly at the place where you met or through Zoom. I appreciate the, the, your time and the advice you passed along. And then what do we do here? We give some, we share some advice they gave to us. We give it right back to them. 
In this, this example, you're 100% correct about how I should explore business opportunities in the city's tech sector. I had not considered that route, but I will now. So we are being specific about something they told us and we're gonna share it back with them. Now, why would we do, let me turn my chat back on. Why would we share, some student go to the chat and tell us, why would we share that advice they gave us back to them? What does it prove we did? When we can give the advice back to someone like Steve, what does it prove we did? Kim says it. It shows that we were actively listening. That's right. And you know, Steve is here taking time out of his busy day. And if he knew that something he told you actually stuck with you, that would make him feel pretty good. That it wasn't all just words going out into outer space and nobody ever actually not only heard it, but really took it seriously. So we always want to start off that message by telling them something that they taught us. That is how we learn effective writing skills and people skills at the same time. Because the email looks good and we're saying all the right things to build upon a relationship. Now, let me return to the what I said at the very beginning as we wrap up, try to finish at 115 Eastern as much as possible, but maybe another minute or two to answer a question. But I do want to remind all the teachers who may have missed it at the beginning that we are, we've made available, at where, what I just discussed is included, how to write a thank you note, but we have guides prepared for how to communicate to set up your own Q&As, let your students hold their own conversations, preparing questions, writing thank you notes, even putting it on their resume. We put all these guides together in a PDF for you, as well as an email etiquette curriculum outline with readings and activities. And I meant to mention, they also get a digital badge when they finish this unit, they can put the badge on their resume. Raise your hand if you do anything with digital badges or credentials or certificates. Any teachers do anything with badging? So we have a badge available. And if you, if you, if you miss it at the beginning, and if you'd like it now, just go to the chat, type the word interested and your email address. We will be in touch with a brief conversation in the coming days to pass along these guides, learn about what you're doing. If you missed this free offer at the beginning, I want you to know about it now. So just type interested. Thanks to those who I may have missed. And so you can continue to do that. I'll just point out one last thing if you missed this as well. And again, please put, make sure you put your email address with the interested. Our webinar in two weeks time, November 5th, we're gonna to talk to Ruth Jones Nichols. She's the president and CEO of the Food Bank of Southeastern Virginia, talking about going into a career in nonprofits, helping people during a pandemic, during Thanksgiving, during the holidays, providing food. Really important job right now more than ever. She's gonna talk about the work that she does. So bring all of your questions about working in nonprofits that day. And again, we uh, hope you're able to go through the worksheet we provided. It helps you to really think through some of the key points we were talking about. And for those who were here live, we'll send out the certificate for you know, your certificate of completion for attending today. You can use it any way you'd like. Thank you to everybody for your, your comments and your questions and requesting the material. That it's really great to see so many new people. Um, let's see, maybe we'll take any one, we have like just one or two more minutes. Uh, let me see if I can scroll back up and find something. Or if anybody has a question that they asked that it wasn't answered, shoot it in the chat real quick and we'll throw one more question to Steve before we depart. I'm going, there's so many uh, people who said they, the answer was listening. I'm trying to find a, a question. <laughs> a lot um, of questions in here, man. I appreciate all these questions. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're really good questions and students take this seriously. And, and I think we all, all appreciate the opportunity to meet somebody while we're, you know, at home. Um, let me see if there's anybody threw something in the chat at the very bottom. Uh, let's, let's go with this from Anshika. What motivated you to do the work you do? You know, what, what, get, what gets you out of bed to do it? Yeah, that's a good question for all of us. You know, why? What gets you excited about it? And we'll we'll wrap on that. What gets me excited is is the the opportunity to to tell stories. I mean, I think that's kind of why I got into into writing and into the creative field in the first place. Um, those are the, the the opportunities that really excite me. Like I said, sometimes it's just about getting the job done and moving the project through through its paces and getting to the next thing. The ones that really excite me are the ones that allow me to tell stories um, 
especially with, uh, well, with all these magazines, but I, the ones that I personally consume the most being like Runner's World, Men's Health, Women's Health, there are people doing just super inspiring things um, in cities and towns and places just all around the world. And it's, it's these individual people, right? It's not just like Nike putting out this latest, greatest shoe technology that's allowing, you know, LeBron James to be a superstar athlete. It's just regular, regular people, you know, who are just out here doing incredible things in their communities through athletics or, or, through, or through other things um, and really like making a difference and, and doing things that, that shape the world and help to make it, make it better and help to inspire others to, to do the same thing. So when I get to tell those people's stories, that's what I get excited about. When I find an, when I have a proposal that's asking for human interest stories or a big budget, you know, can we do something on video? Can we help serve people in some way? And not just to highlight inspiring people, but also to, you know, provide a service to people. We, I was just watching a video that we did earlier this year with, uh, with, with, with plan B, the emergency contraception. And, and, uh, and we had, we had these four just hilarious women having conversations in, in pairs, asking kind of common questions about emergency contraception. And this video was incredible. And it was, it provided a real service to people because it answered people's real questions about this stuff. But it also was just so easy to, to relate to no matter who you were, because they were just sharing their own personal experiences, having these funny conversations with each other, right? So anytime I get to just highlight real inspiring interesting people and and tell stories that hopefully inspire somebody else or give somebody just some information that they need i mean that's kind of what what does it for me great it's great thank you for that answer great way to wrap up i want to thank everybody for being here today i hope you'll join us in two weeks for our next session teachers tell your colleagues bring more teachers and students to the rooms we can have an even bigger crowd well, this one was really great lots of energy so i want to thank everybody i hope that you stay safe wherever you are and that we see you in two weeks and uh, look out for some information on the recording from today and the next webinar and your certificate it's all coming out tomorrow so keep an eye on your email i want to thank everybody again and thank you steve for all your time and, and your wisdom today and we'll see you in november thanks everybody thank you man